All right, good day to you. My name is Fred Oakman, and as always with me today, hold up, hold up, Mr. Jake Peters has no voice, and uh, for the first time ever in 20, 227 episodes, we are having a guest co-host. With me today is one of the show's most contributory patrons, and most importantly, the lead prospect of the best motorcycle club in GTA 5 online, the Crimson Curse. I welcome the one and only Mr. LJ Ocker. So, we are PS This Is Awesome, a PlayStation podcast. This is episode 228. This is a show where we share our feelings about the current state of PlayStation, but before we on the show i want to invite you all to subscribe to our channel on youtube youtube.com slash ps this is awesome and visit us on twitter at ps this is awesome if you want to make fun of our trophy list on the psn you can find me at anchorless underscore 81 and lj ocker at blip underscore mcdougal and if you do want to look at jake's trophies it is jake saw zero one on the psn um jake is the routine co-host if you're just tuning in for the first time and uh he literally is still in bad six so he cannot record the show um but as always you can write us at ps this is awesome at gmail.com and most importantly don't forget to share the show with your friends and be sure to leave comments and rate the podcast as you see fit and as a reminder we are a video podcast as well so you can stare at our ugly mugs have this conversation on youtube so go subscribe to that if you want and for new and or long time listeners we do have a patreon and you can support our show at a one dollar level called the one and only one dollar club head over to patreon.com slash ps this is awesome become a one dollar patron get a free die cut vinyl sticker and a shout out on our show with that out of the way mr lj ocker how are we doing today pretty good man uh just had a busy day with father's day spent a lot of time outside it was beautiful here i'm in indianapolis so we had some nice weather what about you yeah man things are good it's a uh, father's day so happy father's day to you uh thank you yep 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 and uh yeah so we just got back from a trip to applebee's actually my family mm. and i and my dad obviously and uh the whole time i was razzing him about losing his memory and not remembering stuff because that's just what i do um and he, he's pretty sharp still so uh he's not that old i just like to give him a hard time but uh, i asked him you were asking me before we started recording uh if if i took him for a motorcycle ride because i did that with my mother on mother's day and uh, i was going to take my father and uh it ended up not working out that way. Instead, I'm like, I'm just going to take him to dinner. And then it turns out my brother had already asked him to dinner. So I got kind of undercut. But you made a valid point that my brother really doesn't do golf and doesn't do motorcycles. So that was like the one thing he could do. So very well. Uh, very, very good point. But no, so I joined them in dinner. And uh, I just got back. We did some show notes earlier today. Um, the flood, or I had a solo gig at the Lake Resort in Edinburgh on Friday night. That was fantastic. I had a weird thing happen to me, so you might like this. Um, yeah. So uh, this place treats me and my band extremely well. Super awesome place. It's called the Sunset Grill. It's in Edinburgh, Pennsylvania. And uh, I actually uh, have an old college friend of mine. His name's Tim. And Tim got a hold of me. And uh, out of the blue, I haven't talked to Tim in like six years. The last time I saw Tim, we met Sergeant Slaughter at the Erie Seawolves baseball stadium. And I have a picture of Sergeant Slaughter putting me in the Cobra clutch, which is like the coolest Whoa. thing ever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Super awesome. So Tim and I go back. We're college buddies. Tim reaches out. And he's like, hey, man, we really need to catch up again. I'm like, yeah, sure. So Tim shows up at the uh, at the at the venue uh, well before I'm even supposed to be loaded in or anything. So we sit down. And we have a meal. Now, I have never, I have never gotten a free meal when I play this place. The reason I preface this conversation with they've always treated me well because they pay us well and I do get free drinks. Never gotten a free meal. So, we're wrapping things up. The waiter comes over and he goes, uh, so what are you doing tonight? And I'm like, I'm the guy on the stage tonight. I'm playing tonight. And he goes, oh, he goes, well, you don't have to pay. Meal's on us. And I go man, I played here like at least 50 times and I've never gotten a free meal. And I'm like, dude, I don't think so. I was like, I don't think it is. And uh, I, I was like, you know, if I'm being honest, I, how about I just pay because you guys usually just put the drinks for me tonight. I'm not going to drink a lot, but I'll, I'll just pay. And he goes, no, man, I, I'm going to go talk to someone because I think it's free. And I'm like, I'm like, you really don't have to. I have a good relationship with like the owners and stuff. And like, I have no problem paying. He's like, no, 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 I'll, I'll go check. So anyways, uh, Tim and I get to talking and then, uh, one of the owners comes by and he's like, uh, and he's like looking at me and he goes, he goes, you know, honestly, he's like, I don't, I don't know if we, 
He's like, I think it's like it was his polite way of being like, I don't think you get a free meal, but he's the <laughs> owner. So he should know. Right. Nick's a friend of mine. He runs the place, um, the, the restaurant portion. And, and uh, he, he's just like he goes, you know, he goes, sometimes like we do give free meals, though, to like bands who like travel and stuff. And, uh, you know, just to kind of help compensate with like eating and stuff and pay that expense. He goes, but he goes, you know, I, I don't think we've ever he goes, I don't know. I mean. And I'm like, yo, dude, I I had my wallet out. And I was like, dude, I will pay for the food. Like, I'm not asking for it to be free. And uh, he goes, well, you know what? He goes, "Uh, let's just, uh, you know, at the end of the night, we'll just kind of square up at the end of the night with what I owe you. And then we'll take a look at everything. And then we'll just, we'll figure it out then. I'm like, all right, that's cool. And uh, my buddy Tim's looking at me like, what? Like, they don't know if they, like, the owner doesn't know if you can get a free meal. I was like, dude, I don't, I don't, don't ask me, you know. These are weird things that you run into. And, like, to me, those things are never important, like free drinks. Because if I'm playing, I want to be on top of my game. I'm not going to drink a lot. I also have to drive home afterwards. Um, I'm a responsible person. All of us are. So while it's appreciated, uh, I would rather just have the money. Like, don't give me a free meal. Don't float me drinks. Just throw me an extra twenty, thirty dollars. That'll go mm-hmm. so much further with me. But um, it's just weird because as musicians, like, like there's a place in town. I'm not going to name it, but I this has happened more than once where like a band has played there, and the waiter or waitress will come by and they'll be like, "Do you uh, do you guys need anything to eat? You guys want anything to drink?" Like that, not like, can I take your order? And then the band will rack up a tab. And then at the end of the night, they'll take it out of what they were going to get paid. But the way it was delivered was that it was on the house. Because a lot of mm-hmm. bands, you do get that stuff for free. But there's one place specifically, which I won't name, in town, does this to bands all the time, their first time out. And like they don't, they end up actually owing money sometimes because their, their beer is really expensive. They're, it's all like wood fired pizzas and stuff's like, you know, 15 to $18 a pizza. And if you got five people in a band, four people in a band, you're there for three hours. You can imagine the drinks are 10 bucks a drink. You think it's on the house. You think it's all wrapped in. So it's always important to ask, but it's a difficult thing because you don't want to come off like it's expected, but you also uh, need to know these things going in. So it's, it's a weird, weird line to walk, man. Um, So anyways, that's my short story. It was an awkward situation on Friday, but we got through it and Dean, he never uh, charged me anything and I just left and it is what it is. You know, I said, hey, he, he said we would square up if we had to. He gave me a wad of cash. And he's like, all right, we're good. I was like, all right. So either he forgot or it just really didn't matter that much. You know what I mean? Yeah. What'd you get? Uh, they have these really good uh, like tacos. They're vegetarian tacos. They're like cauliflower tacos or something. Like they're really good. I don't know what they're doing to them, but they're they're really they're really fucking good. Um, nice. Yeah, I think Tim had. I don't know what Tim had. He had he had something he really liked. Also, he'd never been there. It's right on. It's not right on Edinburgh Lake, and like you can drive right past it and not even know that it's there because it, there's no big sign. It's like easy huh. to miss. They have cabin rentals. You can rent canoes. It, but it's like a, they they've done a really nice job renovating that place and it's like one of my favorite places to play so um yeah i'm not shit talking them by any means on the record because i want to go back all the time so mm. absolutely yeah yeah. that's awesome yeah so it was it was was cool it was good um i have work off tomorrow uh it's a federal holiday now juneteenth and uh june 18th i believe is is the day that's celebrated but um uh yeah i don't have to work tomorrow are you working tomorrow I am. Okay, well, we'll try to keep the podcast kind of kind of short. But I do want to say before we get into uh, the news, man, I really appreciate you coming on the show and uh, doing this for us. You have been a supporter of the show since I think you started gaming again. And uh, I've enjoyed the time we've spent online. And uh, I, I hope that we have more of that. And if we ever get into another pinch or if you ever want to come on and, and offer some... Uh, you know, if you play some games that we're playing, you want to come on and talk about it. You're always more than welcome, LJ. And uh, it means a lot that you're helping us keep the show steady. We do have patrons now. You're one of them. And uh, it was kind of a curveball when Jake wrote and he said, he, he's going to be OK. Just for the listeners, he's going to be all right. Like Jake's not a person who gets sick. And he's even talked about that on the show. Like he doesn't get sick often. And uh, he wrote me and he goes, he goes, I 
there's no way I can podcast. He, he sent me that. It's like, I don't have a voice. I got back from a work trip. He goes, I've been in bed all day. He's like, this is the shittiest weekend to be sick because it's so beautiful out. So he was really bummed out. And uh, you have his blessing to be on the show. I made sure there were no like weird feelings or anything. Um, Jake's a cool dude. Listeners know that. Uh, so, yeah. So hopefully Jake will be back next week. But thank you so much for filling in for him, LJ. And uh, I appreciate that. So let's get moving on with games that we're playing um i'm still working on mass effect 2 uh i i'm loving this game uh we're not gonna I, last episode i didn't want to get into mass effect too much but jake kind of took it a little bit longer than i hope because we're going to do a spoiler cast for it but it was still a great conversation and i can't believe how much better mass effect 2 is compared to mass effect 1 and i loved mass effect 1 i have a co-worker who told me this they were like hey uh mass effect uh, 2 oh just wait till you get into it and i'm like eh, i can't be that much like mass effect 1 was really good like what could they possibly done it's really really good man and uh so that out of the way i'm playing grand theft auto 5 online i'm up to 1.8 million dollars and uh, so close. Yeah, they have like this double money thing going on right now where like if you boost like some cars, like you get I made like thirty seven thousand in one mission. So if I'm awake after this, since I'm not working tomorrow, I'm going straight up there and I'm going to earn. I'm just going to earn, earn, earn. I'm going to get to that point, get those Dr. Dre missions, man. Um, <laughs> but uh, LJ, what about you? What are you playing, man? Yeah, um, I haven't played too much this week, to be honest. had a pretty busy week. Mm -hmm. Um, I am in the middle of Guardians of the Galaxy. I did not play this week. Um, My wife played it some time back and really enjoyed it. And actually, Jake talking about it recently and playing through it um, really inspired me to to jump on that. So I'm about halfway through and uh, enjoying it um, pretty much, you know, can't agree more with Jake on that one. But this week specifically, Mm -hmm. um, you know... uh, I'm not going to say it's a guilty pleasure because I don't feel no guilt over it, <laughs> um, but I've been playing some Fortnite. I wanted to see what the magic is about. Yeah. Um, sometimes I play some Warzone with my brother-in-law and that's fun, um, but I'm terrible at it. So yeah. I was like, let's see what this Fortnite thing is. You know, I can probably beat up on some 12 year old kids in this and mm-hmm. show them up. So I've been playing that this week and uh, honestly kind of got me hooked. Now I haven't, you know, yeah. I'm not getting into the skins and all that jazz, but uh, you know, it's fun. It's a, it's a pretty game. The colors, um, the, I, I dig the cartoony vibes. Um, so yeah, just been playing that. And um, I did play a little knockout city. I got that, um, some months ago to play with a cousin of mine Mm -hmm. and i just kind of stopped and then my my son started playing i was like i'm gonna jump back in i was like i got a a few rounds in got mvp a couple times so um that's a fun game i guess i just been in the mood for some multiplayer some short knockout city is kind of it, it's exactly that. Yeah. yeah. So I play the traditional map, which is like 3v3. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and there's normally like one special ball that has special abilities in it. Um, but it's just fun. You know, it's it's one of those games where you can pick it up. You can play. It's, it's best of three rounds. And, um, yeah. you know, you can play it 15 minutes and move on. Fantastic. Cool, man. Yeah, that's a game that's free to play also on the PSN right now, I believe. So did you end up yeah. buying that or did you did you buy it before it went free to play? I did, yeah. yeah. I, like I said, I got it some months ago, and I did get on a discount, maybe fifteen bucks. But yeah. free is way better. Yeah, so. for sure, that's cool. Um, we're gonna talk about some other free games coming up uh, down on the news section. But man, Guardians of the Galaxy is one of those games that was uh, that's included with the PS uh, Extra, I think the PS Plus mm-hmm. Extra. So. I, I don't think I'm going to end up buying it. I think I'm going to just subscribe up. I'm going to get my Returnal in there. I'm going to get the mm-hmm. Guardians of the Galaxy in there. I think there was another game that was on there. Um, Cele- Celeste, one of the games that are on PS Plus Extra. I don't know, but I heard that game was really cool. It's on my wish list. Um, and we're going to get some news about the wish-, wish list and how that is incorporated with all these new tiers of PS Plus. It's really cool what they're doing. Um, but before we get on with that, let's talk about some other news topics and uh i don't know did you ever play a plague tale the first game did you ever play that i didn't it's on my backlog but i haven't delved in fair enough so a plague tale requiem is the sequel to a plague tale and uh it's going to be getting an official release date according to the publisher uh focus entertainment they're going to have a showcase that's just scheduled for june 23rd and the sequel is called a plague tale requiem like i said it's going to be the follow-up to a plague tale and uh, it's going to be developed by the same team, which is Asobo. And uh, Requiem is going to feature a more colorful palette, they're saying. So it's not going to be all the same muted colors. It's going to be a different part of the country it's going to take place in. And uh, the recently released gameplay 
looks actually really nice. It's kind of what you would expect because the first Plague Tale looked so pretty and they've only had more time to dial this game in now. And uh, it's been confirmed that it is going to release on PS5. I'm not sure if this is one of those games. Jake would know, but I don't know off the top of my hand. But I, f- head, but I thought for a brief while, I think maybe I'm getting it confused with the Hellblade. Uh, because I think Hellblade 2 is not going to be a PS5 game from what we know, but Hellblade 1 was, and Jake loved that game. And uh, they're both kind of like those weird those weird tier of like not triple a but they look like a triple a get the graphics and like the gameplay and everything is so dialed in you would think mm-hmm. these are triple a studios making these games but they're not um for anyone who hasn't played a plague tale it's uh it's set we talked about it in one of our episodes but jake and i both played it and uh you kind of uh it's based in like the dark ages and there's this big rat infestation and uh there are some other things like you play you play like a, a female character and your younger brother I want to say his name is Huey or something and he has these without going into spoilers he has like these uh, supernatural abilities that kind of come out and like um, the goal is to kind of get him uh, from being taken advantage of and his special abilities so you're going through this dark age and the plague is everywhere towns are shut down and boarded up and you have like the castle guards and stuff that are all like um you know, uh, trying to anybody who's like loitering around on the streets start past curfew times and stuff, and they're looking for you. So there's a lot of stealth mechanics, but the gameplay of this this requiem, I, this is one of those games that I think because the first one was was surprisingly uh, unexpectedly good that like the sequel has caught a lot of people's eye, and I think that. If Asobo does what they're supposed to, what what we all hope that they're doing is dialing in, refining some of the mechanics that were a little loosey goosey in the first one. This game's going to be really something to look out for, and I'm excited. June 23rd, they're going to announce the official release date for this game, and uh, it's just one of those ones, man. That like it could I don't want to call it a sleeper, but it don't don't uh, don't take your eye off it because I think it's going to be a good game to play. And if you haven't played the first one, I, I highly recommend you to go through and play. It was a little longer than I wanted it to be the first one, to be honest, but it was, uh, I don't know. It was what it was. Um, it was good. It was good. Anything on that? How long is it? Yeah. How long do you think it took to, to beat it? <sighs> well, it's a third person kind of stealth game. I expected, be, again, because it wasn't a triple A title for it to be about six to eight hours but it was probably like 15 to 18 hours for me um Mm. so it was much longer than i expected i i wanted and if it wasn't 15 to 18 hours for me it felt like 15 to 18 hours that was my only uh problem with the game was that it just kept going and they had trouble finding they they did an okay job of of keeping it fresh and changing some of the mechanics on you here and there right different puzzles and stuff there's not really a lot of combat in the first one the set the second one you see like uh the character like she stabs somebody stealth and kills somebody and you don't really you kind of have a slingshot essentially in the first game and you're distracting people and you can hit them in the head with stones and kill them but it alerts other people and then it turns into this uh, wild goose chase but um it's a good game man and the setting is so cool because you don't see a lot of games that are set in a realistic environment during like the dark ages right where like the black plague is happening and like everything's ruled by the church and like it's just really interesting it's just an interesting game um a neat little little piece there um and then i wasn't aware that this was happening now i don't know do you remember that game system shock back in the day do you remember the title at all so it's no, a, not at all. Yeah, so it's an older game. Um, it's getting a remake. It, it, it kind of has some outer space vibes, if you're asking. Like, I don't know. I think it does. Um, it's getting a remake. It's slated to release in 2022 for the PS5. Um, the developer for this game is Night Dive Studios. And I couldn't tell you anything that Night Dive have made. I mean, I could Google it and tell you, but you guys can do that just as well as I can. Um, I'm not going to pretend to know much about them. Uh, the game is uh, being published by publisher Prime Matter. And uh, we saw gameplay recently, and it looks okay. Um, but if I'm being honest, I'm not, like, super stoked about this game. Um, it still looked a little janky. It looked kind of like a double-A game, which I think we need more of. But, I mean, it definitely looked that way to me. Um, but I'm kind of annoyed uh, because, like, for the longest time, my wife and I and my friends and I, 
which is like, man, can't Hollywood come up with an original idea? We're getting like new Jurassic Parks. We're getting, um, I have in the notes here. What else did we have? We're, we just got another Top Gun. Uh, they're doing a That 70s Show spinoff called That 90s Show or something like that. We're getting all of these remakes on Hollywood and we've been getting them for a long time. And I don't know if you can contribute any other remakes that have happened. I, I know there's a lot. Um, I feel like there's a dancing movie that got remade. Uh, we had uh, the one, A Star is Born, for the third time it was remade with Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper. Um, they just kind of recycle a lot in Hollywood. And what frustrates me about this, and I'm sure you'll have something to say about it, and maybe is like a gamer who has taken a break and come back like yourself, maybe this is like awesome. But for me, it's just like... I don't know. Like I, I'm starting to see this a lot in games. Like we we're getting the last of us remake and that game's not even 10. It is 10 years old. It doesn't look that dated, right? We're getting final fantasy seven remake. We're getting, uh, we're just talking about system shock remake. We're getting all these resident evil remakes and it's like, wow, you know, you guys, these, these games are tried and true and they were good games, but like, I just want new good games. You know what I mean? I don't know. Do you have an opinion on that LJ? Yeah, there's a lot of that. I mean, we'll talk about it later, but the TMNT game kind of, you know, mm. bringing back to old vibes. So, you know, something like this game, I don't have that nostalgic uh, connection to it. So it's going to have to be a good game for someone like me to play it. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's unfortunate, you know, um, or even not remakes, but just franchises that they, you know, they just stick with, whether it's Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, right. Star Wars. I mean, they just, you know, they keep using them and, and until, you know, and I'm guilty of it too, but until folks start monetarily supporting stuff that is fresh, yeah. um, you know, like Jordan Peele, I think a lot of his horror movies feel fresh. Oh, they're so um, good. I'm not a big horror guy, but yeah. yeah. So, you know, go, you know, we, unfortunately, all these studios and stuff like money's party one. So as consumers, we got to get out there and spend yeah. money and, and time on stuff that is original. And if we don't like this stuff, just don't, don't, don't support, support it. Or, right. Yeah. 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 And, it, and it gets tricky too, because like we were talking like on, on the last episode, Jake and I are really big fans of the last of us. And I didn't know that there was going to be pushback on that price point. Like we released that episode, like right when, and like apparently the, the news media or games media people, it's a very controversial thing. The $70 price point of the last, of us and I was like yeah there's no fucking way I'm paying that um not for that game no it doesn't look that it doesn't look good enough it doesn't now granted it it does it does look good enough like like if that if I had never played the game that would be the version that and that's the version I will recommend to everybody if they haven't played it but if you've already played that game and you've gotten through it they're not adding I don't think they're adding any additional stuff and it's like yeah man a good point about the the peel movies um yeah, and, and, and I'm guilty of it too because I've supported every shitty G.I. Joe movie and G.I. Joe and G.I. Joe game, but it's because I love it, you know? And like some people are just so invested in these franchises, they're just going to buy whatever. Like if you like Star Wars, you like Lego, you're going to buy all the Lego games, you're going to buy all the Sonic games, you're going to buy all the Mario games, you're going to buy all the. You know, I get it. And, uh, you know, you like TMNT. When was the last time we had a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle game? I have no idea. Of course you're going to get that, mm -hmm. right? And it looks awesome. And that's not a remake. Guys. That's just kind of like, you know, uh, hitting that nostalgia funny bone that we all have, you know. But, yeah, man, I, I don't know. I, is System Shock remake going to be awesome? Didn't look it to me, but I, I didn't see a whole lot of it. I, I, and to be honest, I never played the first one. So I'm sure it has a call following. And I think that people are really going to be into this and excited for it. A select group of people. But man, I just wish that some of these studios and in, in, uh, whatnot could just maybe step out on a ledge, but I guess funding's probably a little tighter, you know, and you, you're right, it's a, it's a fiscal game, you know, it's a financial game, <clears throat> you know, where do you want to roll the dice, where don't you want to roll the dice, you know, it's much easier probably to take, take a franchise that already exists or a property that you know already has a built-in fan base and just try to do something slightly different with it or make it look prettier, make it play nicer and uh, people will get excited over it. But man, I'm so happy that Last of Us did happen because I apparently, when they were creating the first Last of Us, I, I guess that they really did think that it was it was gonna be an entire flop and it was gonna be a failure for the studio. And then when it came out and the reaction they got was so good, like they just couldn't, you know, they were just so grateful. Um, so it, it pays to, if you're gonna step out on a ledge, step out on a ledge and, and have 100% conviction. You know, you, you have to just attack the thing and, and follow your heart and do what's right. Um, what you think is right for the thing that you're doing. 
because if if you if you walk with trepidation the whole time, um, the people who enjoy that medium are going to feel that, and it, they're going to you know you're not going to give it your best. So um, I hope that uh, any any studios that are making new things are uh, you know last uh, Naughty Dog's working on new stuff. I'd like to hear what Bend is working on. Um, man, I I just hope that they're they're really going you know as it was a balls in on this stuff <laughs> you know um so man i just i i hope so um so anyways let's move on to the next news point um bethesda uh now owned by uh, microsoft i i have in the notes owned by xbox which isn't true owned by microsoft um but uh, they they had a showcase, and it was interesting to see uh, what was going to happen. Um, there were some rumors that Hideo Kojima, the director of Death Stranding and the Metal Gear games, he had a longstanding relationship with Konami for a while, and then you know they kind of gave him the axe, and they started Kojima produ- Productions, and then he's always kind of been affiliated with PlayStation properties. And there were some rumors that he was going to be working or that he had been working on an Xbox exclusive. He had that PT that he did with Guillermo del Toro that was just a playable trailer. Norman Reedus was in it, and then that flopped. Um, They lost funding for that or it just didn't happen. Or whatever reason, it didn't work out. And uh, there were rumors that maybe he was working on a Silent Hills game. Um, For those who don't know, Hideo Kojima is like one of the biggest names in video games as far as directors. And uh, it was announced... Um, And it's been made official that he is, in fact, working on an Xbox exclusive. And this caused a lot of concern for PlayStation gamers uh, because we like Hideo and we want to be able to play his games. And, uh, you know, if we only have one console, um, it's kind of frustrating. But uh, it goes both ways. And uh, the, the new game apparently is supposed to lean into cloud technology and be like nothing we've ever played before. Now, Hideo is really creative. And he's, he's a really interesting kind of uh, director and he's got an interesting mind and his approach is always a little different. Like Death Stranding was like a walking simulator, but like it did so well. It wasn't just a while. I haven't played it. Jake played it. A lot of reviews are just like, you know, you don't really do much for the first half of this game. You're just walking around trying to balance boxes and stuff. But people loved it and you're building bridges. So for other players to use and their playthroughs and stuff. Um, but uh We'll get into maybe what he's working on or maybe what he's doing, uh, but the, like I said, it's going to lean into cloud technology, and Kojima Productions remains independent, and surely they're going to shop their ideas and pitches to whoever will, will support them and support those ideas uh, moving forward. So my advice to PlayStation gamers across the globe, just relax a little bit. In a tweet from Kojima Productions, it said, after the announcement of our partnership with Microsoft using the cloud technology, many people have asked asked us about a collaboration with Sony um, SIE. And uh, it says, uh, please be assured we continue to have a very good partnership with PlayStation as well. And they put the little restriction mark next to PlayStation because they're so <laughs> professional. Like, who does that? Um, but what do you think about this? Like, I'm okay with him making a one-off for Microsoft. I'm actually okay with it. What do you- yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, it's all about perspective, right? Mm-hmm. So if you're like a, a, an Xbox person, then you're like, hell yeah, he's coming over and, and going to make a game for us. And, you know, it'd be cool. I, I don't know enough about Microsoft and Xbox to think of maybe someone similar on their side that maybe PlayStation gamers would like to have a game made mm-hmm. by. But I guess it's cool if, if uh, you know, he's going to cross the lines and, and make a game. Um, you know, it doesn't sound like he's signed an exclusivity contract was like, I'm only making Xbox yeah. Here on out, I'm so. only working with Microsoft. Yeah, right. Yeah. No, he's been pretty clear, uh, transparent. I almost said clairvoyant. He's been pretty transparent <laughs> about, uh, yeah, that, that, that he he is still maintaining a good partnership with Sony and PlayStation. So I, I can't imagine that Sony could harbor any ill feelings towards Kojima. It's not like they, or maybe they did offer to buy Kojima Productions and Kojima just turned down and said, listen, we want to be independent. Even if you're going to say you're going to own us, but let us do our thing. I, I'm not into that. Kojima came out of a really bad relationship with, with Konami. So I can understand if he has some reservations about signing on any kind of exclusivity deals um, with his studio. Um, I think them remaining, I mean, the game that they're making is going to be an Xbox exclusive. I can understand that. But I think getting pigeon held to only making for one console um, is not what Kojima stands for, or what he's about. So very well put, LJ. And I, I'm interested to see what this game is. I, I can't imagine a game that leans into cloud technology like nothing we've ever seen before. <laughs> like, what does that even mean? Um, what could it be? 
um, some sort of massive shared hard drive or something that like I don't know the gamers have access to I don't know what it could be um, I, I like the idea of it, I wouldn't be surprised if Kojima comes up with an idea that like you have your game and when your game's turned off like other people can get into your game universe and fuck with it or do something weird like that through the cloud or like you know sharing save data that you can actually affect other people's games like I don't know if I'd want to play a game like that and I'm not saying that's what he's developing but that's something I don't think that has ever happened you know um, <laughs> there's some room wiggle room for doing interesting things but um, I don't know I'm noticing right now it's hilarious I'm going to point it out because it's too late and the video the, the viewers are going to uh, see it but if you're watching this you see the little upgrade ticker on LJ's window in the YouTube version it says upgrade and you can now see the timer because I had to crop his video a certain way <laughs> on Jake's it was further <laughs> out so on, oh, no. on yours it's just right up there in the corner it's so funny but yeah that's our zoom timer so when that ticks out we're going to have an advertisement we're at 4 minutes and 30 seconds um, we've got one more news point before we put on our advertisement for the show and uh this one's a big one um it might uh cause some relief or maybe some grief for some people blizzard entertainment uh cleared up speculation on whether diablo 4 is going to be a free-to-play title or not they indicated recently it's going to be a full price release and they're going to plan expansions for the game so um, like I said, depending on how you feel about it, you're going to like it or you're going to hate it. So people who wanted to get Diablo 4 for free ain't going to happen. But that also means that it's going to be a full paid for Diablo game that probably we all want to sink our teeth into. You know, so any opinions on that, LJ? You know, I played a lot of Diablo 3 back in the day mm-hmm. on PC and, I, you know, I really enjoyed it. I played a lot of Blizzard games over the years, but this one's not really catching my eye yeah. and I forget now I should have looked it up, but I, I saw a, a article recently or at least the title and it was talking about the micro microtransactions and like how expensive it was. If you like bought all the stuff to, um, you know, get the dopest armor or whatever. Yeah. And it was just a, like an obscene amount of really? money. And it's just like, yeah, just, uh, not really my cup of tea. So, It'd have to be one hell of a game for me to yeah. probably dive into it. <laughs> yeah, we'll see what it brings when it releases. Uh, Diablo 4 looks like it's going to be pretty awesome to me. I, I know Jake is a diehard a Diablo fan. Like, he's played Diablo 3 I don't know how many times. Like, uh, God, I don't I don't know. Uh, I think he's pretty much done everything you can do in that game. So I'm kind of curious to see what he thinks about this. And, uh, cause I'm not a Diablo player. Yeah. I got into it briefly Diablo three for a, for a hot minute. I was all in. And then I kind of lost, you know, I, I just lost my interest. Um, the procedurally generated dungeons are only cool for so long and the loot pickups get to be a little much. It's like borderlands or any of those games where you just have so much shit that you don't even know what's good anymore. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, those games I think are probably more fun if you have a dedicated group of friends that go in and do them together. I don't, I don't know that Diablo three was for me, um, playing solo. It was fine, but it wasn't like, you know, but yeah, I, I was a big Diablo one and Diablo two player like those. I also played those on PC back in the day. Um, I never really played either of them on a console. I don't even know that you could, I think recently Diablo two came out on console, but um, I only my my true Diablo experiences were Diablo one and two on PC, and then um, duping all of the coins in Diablo two. Um, I think if you dropped them and you picked them up at the same time somehow with a mouse click and a button, you could duplicate items and coins. So like I just hacked the shit out of Diablo two and got all these coins. I had bags and bags of coins in my inventory, and I was just constantly buying weapons and shit. So um, did you ever do that? Did you ever dupe stuff in, in Diablo 2? No. They patched I it pretty it like quick. an honest man, Fred. Yeah. No, no, yeah. Yeah, fair enough. I, I can uh, respect the integrity there, yeah. Well, hey, folks, um, we're going to end this call, and uh, we're going to put on our advertisement. We'll be back with more news. We're going to talk about Fire Sprite, Resident Evil, and all kinds of stuff. So stay tuned. Listen to this advertisement. We'll be right back. Welcome to the PS This Is Awesome Patreon page. For those of you that don't know, my name is Fred Oakman. And I'm Jake Peters. And we're a PlayStation podcast currently in our 10th year. Our first episode aired in July of 2012, where we discussed and speculated on the arrival of the PS4. Over the years, we've used this podcast to take a break from adulting, share our love of video games, and in particular, PlayStation. 
The audio podcast is available on all major streaming services, and we have recently made the leap to uploading video content and video podcasting to our YouTube channel, as well as the very occasional Twitter post or live stream. Over the years, we have covered everything from PS3 to PS Vita through the launches of PS4, PSVR, and now PS5. As our audience has grown over the years, we have decided to start this Patreon with the hopes of creating a medium in which we can give you the opportunity to help support our show. And as a test bed, we're starting with a single tier. It's called the one and only $1 Club. So with your support at the $1 level, we're going to mail you a premium vinyl cut sticker and give you a shout out on the podcast. But at this time, unfortunately, we can only ship to the U.S. and Canada. But this is subject to change depending on your interest. So whether you're new to the show or you're a frequent flyer, we are forever thankful for your support and hope you can find it in your little gaming heart to join us in the one and only $1 Club. Until next time, like PlayStation, podcasting, and Patreon. P.S. This is awesome. Thank you for uh, listening to that obnoxious advertisement. We need to record a new one uh, because uh, I think we're going on to more. I don't know. At some point in that advertisement, we say something about how many years we've been a podcast, and it's been been probably another year than what we mentioned there at this point. But uh, anyhow, um, we were going to talk about Fire Sprite. So Fire Sprite is a uh, Sony-owned studio now. And I pulled this off of Push Square, and there's an interesting link in our article here, uh, or in our show notes, LJ. But uh, other than what's super obvious about this news point, I'm not really sure what else it really means. Um, but Fire Sprite just moved studios into a building that's 50,000 square foot, and uh, it's in Liverpool. And it's a really, really, really big building. And uh, if you look at this article that Push Square even linked to, I'm going to open it up. And this is on... Uh, investliverpool.com news this is really i'm just going to read through it real quick it says liverpool secures largest letting in three years sony owned <laughs> video game developers fire sprite will take the entirety of cert properties fifty thousand square foot duke and par street property providing a further boost to the city's office market and it says fire sprite is relocating from vanilla factory on fleet street to the former uh, Bibby Line headquarters in Liverpool's Rope Walks district, where the company is understood to have signed a 10-year lease. Lease, so they're they're planning on staying apparently and doing some shit there. So, sir, uh, purchased the four-building cluster at 91 in 105 Duke Streets, which includes Liverpool's Grade Two listed former public library in December 2019. The developer then converted the property into modern office spaces um, aimed at technology businesses. Fire Sprite's 50,000 square foot letting at Duke and Par is the largest in Liverpool since parent company Sony took 65,000 square feet at Echo Place in 2019. So they're really, uh, Sony's moving into that hood over there. And uh, it says office take up in Liverpool city center has been low over recent months and years. In the first quarter of 2022, just 8,000 square feet of space was let in the city center compared with 72,000 square feet out of town. So this is downtown. This is right in town, 50,000 square foot. Um, They have a big building now. And uh, so Sony, I mean, obviously, uh, outside of what's obvious is that they mean business with Fire Sprite and they're dumping a ton of money into this studio. I can't even imagine what the dollar amount would be on leasing a 50,000 square foot building for 10 years. I can't even imagine. Um, they are uh, doing some stuff, man. Uh, so I, I don't know what they're doing. Like I said, I don't know what else it means, but it's good to see Sony owned studios getting support from Sony, you know? It, and it, what is really weird is that, like, during, during a time when telework and working from home has been at its highest, they get a 50,000 square foot building. I don't know. Are they going to set up a new motion capture place in there? Are they going to demo it and do some stuff? 10 years. I mean, like, surely they're not going to have a ton of people showing up to work there. They got to be using that space for something. Well, aren't they um, working with Gorilla to make the Horizon VR game? Yeah. So maybe Sony's, you know, going to use them for a lot of VR stuff and you need some space out, out for that, um, for, sure. for testing that out and stuff. I don't know. But um, 
Yeah, that's that's quite the space for sure. You're gonna have to have top secret clearances to get into that building moving <laughs> forward. <laughs> There's some some secret stuff going on. I thought that was a really interesting news point. Thanks to Push Square for posting that. That feels like one of those uh, things that you report on. You're like, man, this is this is some crazy underground stuff here we're uncovering. You know, <laughs> it's like I don't know. Someone had their ear to the ground on that to pull that out. Interesting. Moving forward, LJ, um, you're not into horror games, correct? Not so much. All right. Um, no problem. Uh, Jake can't play him in VR, so you're you're pretty close to where Jake's at. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Jake likes the horror games. Uh, Resident Evil Village is getting its first downloadable content. It's titled Shadows of Rose, and it's going to become available October 28th. This is really awesome. Resident Evil Village did really, really well. I don't think it did as well as Resident Evil 7, or maybe it I mean, it still has some longevity to it, some lifespan to it. It's got some, this will breathe some fresh air into its lungs. Um, the, in, in this game, as it sounds, without spoiling anything, is going to be taking place after you complete the game. So it's a continuation of the game after the now current ending. And uh, you're going to be playing Ethan's daughter, Rose. So hence the title, Shadows of Rose. And I thought that, that was an interesting take on the game. Um, I played this game through. I thought it was good. Jake still needs to borrow it from me. I have the disc copy. So if you've played Resident Evil Village and uh, you enjoyed it or didn't enjoy it, let us know at psisawesome at gmail.com if you're excited for this DLC titled uh, Shadow of Rose. And uh, as a side note for the Resident Evil games, Resident Evil 2, 3, and 7 all now have PS5 versions for download. But what I did here is if you have Resident Evil 7 through PS Plus, you don't get a free PS5 upgrade. I don't know. It was so stupid, but it is what it is. Um, weird stuff. Sony, get it together. Uh, and uh, let's get into uh, Tactics Ogre, LJ. Um, originally, a Super Nintendo game uh, that was ported to PS1 called Tactics Ogre is getting remade apparently here's another remake um the game this is a game that needs it though i mean it's all 8-bit and stuff so i don't know how they're remaking it but a graphic popped up somewhere on the sony store recently which all but confirmed that those rumors are true so if you're a tactics ogre fan which there are lots of you out there um and you're probably following the rumors this is only good news for for you um i think the only real tactics game that i played back in the day like rpg games was like uh war of the lions which is final fantasy i really hmm. like that game um, some of the old, old original XCOM games on PC. And then I, I used to play this game on PC called Heroes of Might and Magic, which was fantastic. Are you a tactics player? Have you, you dipped your toes in any of that? I don't think so. I, I really don't. Um, I've never even heard of any of the games you just yeah. mentioned, to be honest Space with you. Hulk, I played that one. Um, that was like the Warhammer series. Um, okay. The, it's a uh, you know, turn-based kind of tactical games that are, I don't know, that are kind of fun. Um now, everyone's played Street Fighter, so I know you've played some Street Fighter at some point in your life, LJ. Street Fighter 2 is now free to play, or free on the PS Store right now as part of the Capcom Arcade Stadium, um, along with 1943 Battle of Midway, which I love those 1943-1942 games. They're like a top-down, you're just a little airplane, and uh, it's more like... Yeah, it's top down, but the, like the the enemies kind of come down at you, but they don't. It's like your plane's actually moving, and all the, everything below you, like you're over the ocean. You see battleships and different, and it, it's like a really fun kind of like a new take on Galaga or something or Space Invaders. <laughs> but it was like all World War Two stuff. They had arcade cabinets back in the day. Twenty five cents, you get in there and just mash the button and try to like defeat all the oncoming. Uh, uh, Nazi planes and stuff. So that's cool. That's a, that's going to be a fun. It's not a remake. It's just like ported to the PlayStation. But that and 1943 Battle of Midway are available for free on the PlayStation Store right now. So make sure you download them. LJ, what's your take on Street Fighter? I'm curious to hear. I'm excited. Like Jake, I think the last Street Fighter I played was the one on Super Nintendo. Played the crap out of that. Mm -hmm. um, and I got one of those classic uh, Super Nintendos, and it's on there as well. So oh, nice. played it a bit there. But, hey, if the game's free, um, definitely more <laughs> inclined to check it out for sure. So Yeah. Street Fighter 2 is one of those games that was like, I feel like it only seemed like it didn't have a lot of characters because Street Fighter 3 had so many more. Mm -hmm. But 2 was a cool game. 
and uh, I enjoyed it. So yeah, I'll definitely be be picking that up, and I'll probably honestly be playing Battle of Midway a little bit more, and I play Street Fighter too. But hey, <laughs> when they give you free games, man, put them in your library, get them downloaded. You know, you just don't know. Like you might have a, you might be like Jake someday, just laid up in bed. And you're like, man, I don't want to get involved in like one of these super serious games. So what's in my library? What can I just dick around with, right? So one of these days, you might see Street Fighter Two on there and be like, oh shit, yeah, that might be fun to dive into, or maybe you have someone over. And, uh, you know, you could do some couch co-op or something. That'd be so fun, right? Just to have it in there. It doesn't mean you got to play it now. Download it, put it in your library. Uh, Best advice in the world. So, move forward, Jake. uh, Oh, my gosh. I'm on autopilot. LJ? Uh, Man, it's weird. 200, I don't know how many episodes I said. The the PlayStation Store has a nice feature. I mentioned this earlier in the podcast. And uh, do you use the wish list on the PS Store? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I sure do. It's an awesome thing. Um, what's so cool about it is like, you know what games you want, right? Sometimes it's tough because the way the Sony store breaks up their deals, um, some are like, oh, games under, uh, I don't know, $20. And they're like 65% off a of PS Plus, 45% for non-PS Plus. So you just click here. And then it's like uh, indie indie deals. And they separate all these deals out. And you just never know really where to look unless you're typing in the game title to see if it's one of the ones that are on sale. So if you keep track, and this is a pro tip for the listeners, if you just wish list the games that you want, you can, at least on the PS5, I don't know how it works on a PS4, but uh, it probably works. It definitely works on the phone app, on the, on, the, mm-hmm. on the app. You can do it on there. If you go to your wish list at any point ever, um, it will show you the, the retail cost of the game and if it's on sale, it'll have a strike through and it'll show you the current price. And uh, if you know what games you want and what games you're looking for deals on, you know, there we all have those games where it's like, uh, I'll, I definitely want to play that, but I'm not paying full price for it. Throw it on your wish list and just come back to that and just see. And eventually it's going to go on sale. Like Bubble Bobble is one of those for me. That I, I really, <laughs> I want it to go a little low. It's been on sale a few times, but not quite enough yet for me. But, uh, you know, that's one of them. Um, as I mentioned before, Returnal's on my list. Guardians of the Galaxy is on my list. Uh, I've got Hades was on my list, and I found it for 10 bucks at Walmart, which is crazy, the PS5 version. Um, <laughs> and then uh, I've got some other weird ones on there. Celeste was on there, like I said. And then I had, man, what else? What's on your wish list right now off the top of your head? Do you know what's on there? I do, yeah, and I literally do the same thing you do. So that's how I keep track of games um, that I want to buy and stuff so I don't have to sift through the bullshit of the store. Um, I also use it just like if there's a game that comes along um, that I want to play, uh, I'll put it on there just to keep track of it. So like I'm a dad with three kids. My wife also kind of delves into to gaming. So, um, you know, sometimes I'm looking for games. Uh, I'll look up lists for like kids, you know, like five or so, like my daughter. Mm-hmm. And I have no idea what these games are about right. um, in terms of like actually playing them. So I'll throw them up there and then, yeah, like wait till they're on sale or something. But um, a big one on my list right now, it's actually on sale. I'm tempted <laughs> to get it is Far Cry 5 because I haven't. I haven't played that. Jake says it's his fave, and uh, my brother-in-law really enjoyed it too. Yeah, um, that's on there. Um, Death Store is on there. Oh, I really yeah. want to get that game. Yeah, um, and a few others for sure. Fantastic! I, that wish list is like the nicest thing to have happened to the PlayStation Store. To be honest, I think it's fantastic, and and compounding onto why it's so cool with the release of the new PlayStation tiers, which they're out now, folks. So you can upgrade your account. Um, to PS Plus Extra or PS Plus whatever. What's the best one? I, I forget what it is. Definitive? I Deluxe, know. I think. Deluxe maybe is what it's called. Anyways, you can do the upgrade and it will, uh, it's prorating them, um, which is interesting. So my account actually just renewed in May, my Plus account. So um, every, every day that I wait to buy up to the Plus uh, Extra, it's going to get a little bit cheaper and cheaper for me. You know, because my time's ticking. Mm-hmm. It's only going to upgrade, not from a year from that point, but up to my next renewal for Plus. So I might do it like halfway through the year because um, there's only like three games on there that I really want to play right now. So save myself like another 20 bucks and then just, you know what I mean? So, but anyways, what I was getting next, I'm, I'm getting a little divergent here. Um, the PS Store has a really nice feature now. Um, it will show you which games on on your wish list or which games in the store in general 
are included for PS Plus Extra, or oh, it's called Premium, sorry, or Premium. Um, for example, uh, the games that I have on my wish list have like a little tag now next to them showing that they are included with the, the bought up services. So like um, next to Returnal now, it gives me the price for Returnal, and then it also says this is a PS Plus Extra game. Um, so meaning, and like my wish list is it slowly has been taken over by the little logos for PS Plus Extra. So like I said, Guardians of the Galaxy is on there. Um, Returnal's on there. Uh, there's another one on there. So like it's like three of these games, I'm looking at the cost of them. They're like 60 bucks a piece, 60, 50 bucks a piece. Like you're looking at like $140 there. And it's like right now I can buy up for like 40 bucks. Like that's the smart play. So the store is very transparent about what games are you can get for what tier, and that's super nice. There's like there's no more guessing. Um, so they did a good job, I think, with that. So, hey, uh, have you noticed that on the store? Have you seen that? I haven't. No, I haven't checked out my wish list here recently. Yeah. But I'm glad they do that, and you know, you don't accidentally buy Returnal when you know you can get it for free. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they don't want all the refund requests too. You know what I mean? Like, oh, that's true. I didn't realize yeah. it. You know, that would that would cause that would be like an HR nightmare. Like, whatever. I don't know, public relations nightmare. Um, yeah. This next one was really interesting. So mm-hmm. Sony is announcing a premium Pro controller. Um, to announce, I guess, this is still speculative. It hasn't been 100% confirmed, I don't believe. And this is on Push Square. So the thing, I'm going to read through this article just because there's a it's a little meaty. What does this mean was my first question. Like, what is a premium pro? Con- so now we're getting PlayStation Plus Extra, PlayStation Plus Premium, and now we have access to a premium pro controller for the PlayStation 5. It's not the, Dual, it's not the DualSense 5. It's a, it's a premium pro controller. So this is alleged, and this is per Push Square. Sony will allegedly respond to fan demand and announce a premium quality pro version of the DualSense controller for the PS5 potentially later this month. Now, this is as of June 2022. The the controller, codenamed Hunt, has been revealed by a journalist named Tom Henderson, who has a relatively sturdy track record when it comes to industry industry uh, in, insider matters. He claims the device is going to feature removable analog sticks, trigger stops, and rear button paddles. Um, so there, if you guys recall, back when the DualShock, uh, you know, PS4 and stuff, they did sell these weird back button things on the DualShock 4 for PS4. It was really weird. I, I had no interest in them. But apparently uh, the PS, the the premium pro controller for PS5 is going to feature this. Um, according to uh, Tom Henderson, who claims to have seen prototype pictures of this controller, the unit retains the same iconic look and shape of the existing DualSense controller, but it has buttons beneath the analog sticks, which are used to release them so they can be interchanged. And there are also grips around the unit, which again can purportedly be removed. The stops on the triggers will allow you to shorten the length of travel, which pro gamers argue helps with reaction times in shooters. And it's unclear how those will work in conjunction with the DualSense's existing adaptive triggers, but time will tell on that front. It's also unclear whether the controller will work on a PS4 or PC, but we expect it will. Um, they're saying that it could be uh, released or announced as early as, as June. Um, but that's about all we know for it. Now, I know that there have been reports of drifting with the analog sticks. My one, my my original PS5 controller does this. Um, huh. Up, up on the right right analog stick, it will it will go sometimes, and uh, the only way to stop it is to pull back on it, and it gets it to stop. Um, so I'm having issues with it. I have not had the dual the dual that dual sense five for more than two years. I mean, PS5 has been out for how long? I don't even know. When did it come out? Oh, coming up on two years, right? Man. Was it September 2020? I want to say something like that. November 2020, yeah, something like that. Yeah, it was. A, yeah, but the problem is that I haven't had that controller for more than two years, and it's already drifting. So it, they don't seem to have the longevity as the DualShock Fours do or did. So being able to pull those analog sticks out only would lead to you thinking that they're going to offer replacement analog sticks parts for it, right? Like, 
I would imagine they'll have their own store for this controller to replace those and custom colors or who knows, who knows what, you know, or maybe you have to buy them aftermarket and put them in there. But if it can solve the drift issues and breathe some life into the DualSense 5 controllers, it might be worth an investment to pick one of these pro controllers up. Um, if all you have to do is swap out those two things, I don't know. We'll see any opinions on this. This is kind of weird. It is kind of weird at the same time. I mean, there's money to be made, so why not? Um, I have come across some like pro controllers um, for PS5, I think, uh, and Xbox and stuff. And I mean, they're hella expensive. I guess what first comes to my mind is like, I get the, they're almost like modular, right? So you can kind of customize it. They have other features, but like, are they made better too? Right. Because that's something that I would be interested in, you know, with kids and stuff. I mean, my controllers are kind of beat up just from being thrown around. Yeah. Not, you know, they're not drifting or anything, but like, are they actually made better? Um, you know, like most people, when a price point comes out, that'll be kind of the judge, I think, to see if it's like really worth it. Um, I mean, I play games quite a bit through the week. I don't know if I'm that hardcore of a gamer where I need 89 buttons, you know? What about you? Is that yeah. something that interests you? No, all that this did was remind me of the time when, like, you could buy controllers that had, like, turbo buttons on them and stuff. Like, I remember having a, a Genesis, and uh, I believe it was Genesis, and my my friend Ben, we would play Mortal Kombat and stuff, and uh, he had this controller that would plug right into a Sega Genesis that like had turbo buttons on the top, and you just push and hold them, and the guy be and like punch really fast. And I'm like, man, like this could get out of control fast, you know, if Sony starts offering controllers that you can tweak and mess with. I mean, they're walking a fine line. I guess if you can't really mod them to that point, you know, they're not. They didn't say they're modding the actual buttons, right? They're putting a stop on the one two decrease the distance of contact for shooting kind of like a, a a baked in turbo i mean if you can push the button faster you push it i don't even know if that's even a real thing like you know it seemed push square wasn't even sure if like you know they say they air quotes they say it makes it so you can have decreases reaction time but we're talking professional level right it's not like you mm-hmm. have an auto headshot thing in your game it's not like you're you know, you've got a turbo button. Like I think on the the Super Nintendo or, or the regular Nintendo had a Game Genie, which so this is just reminding. It's like reminding me of like these little shortcuts that people would take to get better at games. And it's like if you can't be really good at a game using the controller that is meant for that system, then that's on you. Like if you need a special controller to make you better. Then, like, are you really better? Like, that's where are I'm you a at. pro? You know what I mean? Are you pro? Like, if you can't, if you can't take someone on because you don't have the edge of having like this shortened distance to make the button push, like, I don't know. Like, I feel like we live in a commu- in a society where like everybody just wants to take every edge they can get, and like you know, it's so dog eat dog out there. But again, like you said, if they're made nicer, uh, man, if if they're putting better components in. Um, I, I would be concerned that if they're modular, like they're just opening the controller up to have more issues, um, you know, adding different features to it. I mean, it seems like they probably did a lot of R&D on the DualSense 5 and apparently not enough because the drifting thing's a real thing on those controllers. The battery life isn't exceptional. Um, it is an incredible controller. Don't get me wrong. It's the best controller I've ever played games with. I just have nitpicky qualms with it is all. But, I mean, do you need a pro controller? I mean, it seems like a little... But like you said, there's money there. They can make a little extra bucks. I, I don't know. I don't I don't really care, but I, I think it's a little weird. What well, to play uh, devil's advocate, is your guitar stock? Mine is, yes. Well, oh, really? not my okay. acoustic. Not my acoustic. Okay. My electrics are. Yeah, they are stock. My acoustic, no, 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 no. Okay. No. Um, that's a fair question, too. Yeah, right, right. So, yeah, I mean, it's interesting, man. Um, and yeah, my acoustic is not stock because I wanted it to sound better. And it does sound better now that I've, you know, I have a different pickup in it. Actually, mine didn't come with a pickup. I had to get an acoustic pickup for it. Mm. I got this LR Bags Anthem in my guitar. And, uh, but yeah, when it comes to video gaming, though, you know what I mean? Like, it's a competitive, it's a very competitive thing for people. So it's all, is it, are we, are we getting into pay to win? now for online shooters like if if you can buy the nicer controller does that really give you an advantage over some kid who couldn't afford one 
I don't know. It's just weird. I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Is there a way to for the system to detect whether you're using a pro controller or not? And if so, put all those people in the lobby together. You know what I mean? That will weed out a lot of the really good players, probably. You know, <laughs> all the people mm-hmm. I don't want to play with. Just give put all the pro controller players in another lobby. <laughs> nah, I'm just playing. Um, write us. Let us know what you guys think about that. It's an interesting thing that that was uh, allegedly announced is going to happen. Or announced was allegedly going to happen. Uh, and, and the biggest news point of the week, and uh, man, I, I don't have a lot to say about it, and uh, probably to the dismay of the listeners, but Final Fantasy VII, the anniversary stream occurred. It was announced that the remake of the beloved game is going to be made in three parts. We know that we had Final Fantasy VII remake, and then we also had like the retrograde thing. I think we touched on it last show. And then, uh, so we already have that first part. The third part apparently is already in production and Final Fantasy VII Part Two has been announced and it's called Rebirth. And Rebirth is supposed to launch in winter of 2023. And that seems like a ways off. It's about a year and a half. People, I think, are a little upset over the date. But, I mean, do you, do you want it or not? Like, do you want it to be good? Okay, let's wait, you know? And it probably, uh, they probably had to, because they they know it's three parts, and that was a big question. It's like, this is a very long game. How, how many parts is this thing going to be? Are they ever going to finish this thing? A lot of speculation. Okay, the first one was awesome, but are they actually going to follow through and actually finish this thing off? They have a game plan. They have a roadmap. The third one's being produced right now and being developed, and... Uh, Part two is probably pretty close, definitely well, well into production um, development cycle. So I, I think that uh, winter 2023, honestly, to me is reasonable. I still haven't played the first part, so I'm kind of excited now to dive into Final Fantasy VII Remake and uh, knowing that this is on the horizon here for winter 2023. This might be a, uh, a January, February game for me, Final Fantasy VII now. I think the remake might be January, February. Let it breathe. Revisit it. The second one. What about you, LJ? Yeah, it's definitely on my backlog as well. I was going to joke and say, so actually we're getting this game summer 2024. Yeah. That's how it feels like. <laughs> but um, no, I, it, it kind of sucks to hear about games so ahead of time. But, you know, at the same time, I think, you know, uh, unlike when we were growing up when there's just rumors and shit, you know, um, stuff gets leaked. And so they want to beat that. They want to hype it up. So I I understand where they're coming from. It just sucks. You've got to be like, damn, we got to wait so long for that. But uh, no, I'm pretty pumped now with these final fantasy games. Didn't the remakes, didn't they kind of alter some of the stories or add to it? Like it's not a complete remake, man. Is that, I, well, they've, they've remade them. So, I mean, they, I think they're giving some attention to different parts of the game a little more. You know what I mean? Like, I now I haven't played... I only played the demo, Final Fantasy VII Remake, and it had been so long since I played the original that I'm probably not the best person to ask, but it was my understanding that it is... Uh, you know, like when you when you play a game, let, let's let's let me rephrase this in a way that maybe I can explain it the way that my brain's thinking about it. When I was a kid, we had a sled riding hill. We had two hills that we'd ride down. One was like for noobs, right? It was like, OK, this one's not very steep. You can handle it. And then there was one in the neighborhood that was like, oh, shit, like you're going down that. All right. You know, let's all watch and make sure he's all right. Now, that was from the perspective of like a seven or eight year old. I've been through that neighborhood and I've seen both of these hills and I could walk backwards down the scary hill like in my adult years. Like it's not that scary. Right. So in in that metaphor or way of looking at things, um, what I remember it being is nothing like I experience it now in terms of Final Fantasy seven. Final Fantasy VII Remake is exactly how people remember Final Fantasy VII being who played it, right? It's like, these are the characters, but it looks so good. Like, this is exactly what I remember it being like. But, like, not exactly, but, like, this is, like, you know, you have to have a little bit of, uh, 
suspension of disbelief or you have to have a creative mind like back in the day when you were playing games right like the battles would happen and like in your mind like you know there's crazy shit going on you're like oh yeah but like in reality the guy's just going and it's like 28 damage shit 35 damage right and but like in your brain like if you have a creative mind you're like you're envisioning that whole battle taking place you're taking on these these enemies and it's like it's a firefight and it's crazy and like you know everything's on the line so like the new final fantasy 7 the remake they they take what i feel like the majority of final fantasy 7 players felt like was going on in final fantasy 7 and just ex- expanded on it to make it feel like we all thought was happening so Mm -hmm. they they did a good job there now do they revisit all the story beats they definitely don't in final fantasy 7 um because it's a three-part thing but i think they cover a lot of it but i thought that like what that game covered was such a small amount of the original game that like i don't know how they're going to do it in three parts so like are they cutting stuff out are they not visiting everything are they trimming some fat here? Are they adding new stuff? I thought they did add some stuff um, in, like when you beat seven. I think there was like a trailer that was that came out at the end, or like a teaser trailer or something. Like there was like an enemy that showed up or something. Like oh my god, and, it, and, and like people being like oh my god, that's crazy, you know. And uh, I think people were okay with it, but I think it was a bit of a modification of not necessarily story, but maybe the storytelling. Um, I don't know, but I, I don't know enough about it in, to talk about it. And if the listeners do, write us, let us know. Um, I loved Final Fantasy VII. It's just been so long since I played it, dude. Um, what do you What do you think, man? Like, do you think it's safe for them to uh, maybe trim the fat in areas? Do you think Do you think that the, the hardcore fan base? Like, I'm trying to put it in perspective of like a game that I love, right? That's a really long game. Um, like fallout or, or like we just i just dumped a ton of time into horizon right you did too mm-hmm. like if they trimmed some of those side missions out or fat out of it and like let's say in 20 years they do a remake that's just like mind-blowing if they cut out some of the side missions trim it down just so they can do it would you be that upset about it or is there a trade-off is is there a trade-off worth sh- like taking some of the original material in altering it for an upgrade i mean yeah probably at some point you know especially like graphically like you know i play a lot of video games that you mentioned before i kind of got back into video gaming after quitting and it's like i look at these and i'm like this is what i thought it looked like when i was a kid <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know what i mean yeah. you're like this is what I, yeah and then you go back and play them or look them up on youtube you're like oh my god i can't play, how did i even play this yeah. um so yeah i think there's definitely some value to that so i think as long as the spirit of the game is there um you know that's what matters so yeah i'd be willing to sacrifice some side missions on a game that i love mm-hmm. if it meant it was you know way more prettier and um just a more robust world and yeah not as not as old school and like maybe offer a little creative freedom to the people who are putting the work in you know as long as as long as i think you're right the spirit of the game is there and the folks developing the remake are are in it you know what i mean and they're passionate about it like then then it's fine like the streets of rage uh game it wasn't a remake but it was a continuation of streets of rage one two and three and uh there was some major graphical stuff that they did with those games but to me it was like yeah these are the characters i know and love this is awesome like you know it graphically it's the best looking arguably i mean you know i mean some people probably prefer the pixel art a little bit here and there you know the 16 bit 32 bit whatever but it's the smoothest coolest uh thing and we did skip a news point man let's go back what was the tmnt news point um where's that at oh we missed two points um, we did. Let's, yeah, let's go back to those real quick. We got seven minutes, LJ, before I have to call you back. And uh, this is why Jake and I always complain about this Zoom thing. It used to let us go indefinitely. Right. So annoying. We got to figure this out. Um, Fallout 76 is getting a new expansion in August of 2022. I forgot this was even a game. <laughs> I don't know, man. Yeah, when did that come out? That's got to be out for a while I now. I, I don't. We you can look it up if you want. It, I'm looking it up. Yeah, it's getting an expansion in August of 2022. Um, 
that's good, I guess. You know, I mean, almost four years old. Yeah. So I don't know. I know when it came out, man, people were not stoked on this game. Um, but I think it's got its following. So if you play Fallout 76, uh, August 22. Now, the I will say this is probably honestly the news point that I'm most stoked about just because it's cool. Um, and it's one of the one of the neatest things that I've seen. I love when music and video games cross like musicians and like they really get involved in stuff. And uh, the upcoming Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle game, um, Shredder's Revenge. Uh, so Ghostface Killer and Raekwon um, from Wu Tang contributed uh, lines um, to a to a music track for the game. And the title of the song is "We Ain't Came to Lose." Um, and it's very much uh, a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle lyric based song and uh, it can be streamed on online on YouTube and it's again it's called We Ain't Came to Lose and it is awesome um, I'm not really uh, invested in rap man but when I hear good rappers and I know people who have skin in the game so to speak and I know uh I've got a pretty decent bullshit detector for for musicians in general, and uh, these guys are legit, man. And uh, I I I totally respect it. I listened to the song. I loved it. And what's what's so weird about Ninja Turtles is that uh, they always seem to have rap songs. Um, Vanilla Ice with yep. with the Go Ninja the Ninja Rap or Go Ninja Go or whatever back in the day. And uh, I'm down. I'm I'm cool. I love it. And uh, so cool. So if you get a chance to listen to that, did you listen to the song, man? No, I didn't know you could. It's on YouTube. I just, yeah, just Google, uh, just YouTube it. We ain't came to lose. It's so good, man. They're talking about Splinter and, and they name the different nice. Ninja Turtles and stuff. It's actually really good. Uh, and it doesn't come off cheesy at all, which is crazy. I mean, something about delivery and rap that you can just about say anything if you do it with style and you do it with class and you do it with conviction and uh i can't think of many better rappers than these two um especially uh you know obviously they're in wu-tang so they know their shit and uh they're good and uh the this song is so cool man i uh, and you can get like the I didn't know that TMNT Shredder's Revenge was going to have real music. I thought it was going to be like eight bit, all eight bit music and stuff. So I'm curious because this isn't that. This is like a straight up, really well recru- recorded, produced rap song. So I don't know how they're going to incorporate that into the game, which I'm curious about. Is it on the title menu? Is it during a cutscene in between? Battles? Is it when you beat the game? Maybe, maybe this kicks on with credits roll. I have no idea how they're going to use it. Is it during the game itself? You know, who knows? Dude, you got to listen to the song. It's like two and a half minutes. It's so good. It's so good. It got me pumped. Yeah, I'm definitely going to check it out. Uh, I, like you, I kind of dip my toes in rap and in hip hop. I'm not too uh, much into it, but these dudes aren't bums these are legends right, yeah, right making this sure. song so it's got to be rad and yeah what makes it even better is they tied it directly to the game so that that's so awesome yeah it's not like they just borrowed a song of theirs like oh can you record something we got this thing we want to use yeah we'll write something but it's like they took time man and they they breathe like uh, they're they're talking the language the tmnt language it's so weird and cool i love it you know i, I just love this stuff um yeah, I, I don't know. It's really cool to see crossovers like that. You know what I mean? And uh, I know, uh, oh man, who was it? Um, who played uh, the blind master in the G.I. Joe movie? Oh my gosh, I have his figure too. Uh, he was in Wu-Tang. Um, I got to look it up now. I got to look it up. Uh, I, I had a couple of his records, or at least one of them. Um, blind master, G.I. Joe... Uh, Does he rap like a song for in a GI Joe movie? No, no, no. Uh, Rizza, oh, okay. Rizza. Um, oh, okay, yeah. So he he actually plays Blind Master in the live action GI Joe movie, and he's really into that kung fu shit, right? A lot of these Wu Tang mm-hmm. dudes are. They're into it. It's awesome. And what's so cool is that Rizza, when that movie came out, got his own action figure as Blind Master. So it's Rizza's face and head and everything on a G.I. Joe figure, and I have it. It's the coolest freaking figure in the world. Um, I might actually have two, if I'm being honest. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's so cool, dude. So I love it when when uh, 
you know, musicians that I respect and appreciate cross into my nerdisms and uh, those worlds collide in such a fantastic way. This is like one of the coolest, coolest things I heard all week. So uh, go check out the song We Ain't Came to Lose. It's really, really cool. Um, But with that being said, I'm going to call you back real quick, LJ. We're going to talk about new games coming out this week to the PSN. And then we're essentially just going to sign off and uh, we're going to let the listeners go for the week and uh, we'll be back here in a minute. All right, here we are. We're back. Thank you so much. It's been a long evening, LJ. You got to work in the morning. I uh, luckily don't have to. I'm just going to keep bragging about that. But uh, we are recording this on Sunday. I believe it's the 19th today. Is it not? Say the 19th? I think it's I the think 19th, it's- man. Yeah, I th- the, the 19th. 19th. So, yeah, just for the books, for the record. Uh, and uh, we're going to get into new games here. Um, June 21st, we're getting Fall Guys on PS5. The Shadowrun Trilogy on PS5, PS4. That's kind of like a tactics game. No, it isn't. I don't know. It's like an RPG-ish game. Um, June 22nd, we're getting Fire Girl Hack and Splash Rescue DX. What a fucking mouthful. PS5, <laughs> PS4. <laughs> Uh, June 23rd, Deliver Us the Moon. I think I talked about this game briefly a few episodes back. Um, there was a game called Deliver Us Mars or Deliver Us something, and uh, it did pretty well. This one looked kind of cool. PS5, PS4 is coming out June 23rd, and then we're getting Sonic Origins on PS5, PS4. June 24th, I think it's AI Somnium Files Nirvana Initiative, PS4. Another crazy title for a game. Um, the Capcom Fighting Collection on PS4. We're getting Madison on PS5, PS4, and we're getting Pocky and Rocky Reshrined. <laughs> That's hard to say. <laughs> PS4. Any of these games strike your fancy, LJ? Uh, I, I do play some Fall Guys. Okay. I'll be honest. Um, I do I do delve into that. It's just, again, a fun game, kind of like Knockout City and Fortnite to jump on and play. Um, now, I thought Deliver Us the Moon... I thought that came out a while Wait, ago. Wait, is that the, is, it, is that's not the new one? Maybe that's the first one. I think so. Um, the, my wife and son played a little bit of that. It looks pretty interesting. Really? Um, seems like it'd be a cool VR game. I don't know if they did it on VR. Um, I could be wrong about that, or maybe it's like the PS5 version. Yeah, I'm looking out. right now. It is. Uh... Deliver Us Mars is definitely the sequel. Oh, okay. So yeah, Deliver Us the Moon, and maybe they're gearing up to push that sequel out. They want you to try the first one. It, the, it has a 9 out of 10 on Steam. It has a 68% Metacritic score. Um, 95% of Google users like the video game. It was released in 2018 um, for Windows. And uh, it's an adventure puzzle video game um, uh, by uh, studio uh, Kyokin Interactive. Um, it was self-published as uh, Deliver Us the, the Moon Fortuna for Windows. Uh, in September 28th, 2018. Um, people send, seem to like this game. And uh, you're right, Deliver Us Mars, I believe, is the follow-up that I don't think has been released yet. So it must be coming... Is it a, is it available on the PS4 right now? Deliver Us the Moon? Yeah. So is this just a PS5 release? I'm not sure. Uh, we played it on the PS5, but I'm not sure if it was a PS4 or PS5 game. It must have been a PS4 because it says here that the PS5 one's coming out. No, it has both of them. I don't. That's hmm. weird. I don't know. Interesting. Well, anyways, there it is. It looks cool. You said your wife and kid played it a little bit. It looked kind of neat. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Are you interested in any of these games? Yeah. Yeah, that one. That one I am. And then uh, the Shadowrun trilogy always was interesting to me. Um, I remember as a kid growing up, uh, I was friends with uh, 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 my buddy Ben, and uh, his older brother would have tabletop uh, RPG sessions with Shadowrun. They would play Shadowrun, (laughs) and uh, he was really into it. And I would always be a fly on the wall. Ben and I would watch. We were too young to really understand what was going on. So that game has a little bit of nostalgia for me. The board game, not not the video game versions of whatever it is. But I, I always thought that that was interesting um it's like the uh the vampire masquerade games like the, it was a, it was a card game much like magic the gathering it started off and they called it jihad and then it, it got it expanded and then they ended up calling it vampire um and it took off for a bit so a lot of those nerdy things i was kind of always kind of you know had 
an interest in growing up and never really got into into it because I didn't have enough nerdy friends to really and that stuff's expensive when you're a kid and you're growing up and you know only one of your parents is working and you know like you don't really have a lot of money to go around and you're too young to work a job so you kind of your exposure to these things is always kind of based on just who are your friends what are they playing with what do you have access to you know so a lot of those things are really cool to me. I just don't really have a lot of experience in those in those worlds, but I'm interested in them. Um, but yeah, I'm not not a Sonic person. Uh, couldn't tell you what Fire Girl Hack and Splash is. Uh, Fall Guys, I thought looked interesting, and it was uh, free on the PSN for a while. I had it, and I tried a couple rounds, and it was fun. It was a good laugh playing it. You know, just interesting. Um, games and some of these I, I you know capcom fighting collection might be awesome is that like a street fighter kind of fighting or is that like a beat em up i would imagine that it would be a beat em up collection if it was like mm-hmm. you know fatal uh whatever they're called fury or whatever fist of fury i don't know what that game was called I, streets of rage kind of games but um the other ones no idea what they are and i noticed on this list of games there's like some weird uh capitalization things i don't know if that's how it came over but like uh, Madison has a lowercase I and then uh, Nirvana in the AI the Somnium Files Nirvana Initiative the A is capitaled at the end of Nirvana but nothing else and I don't know if those are typos from the site I pulled it off of which was Push Square or if it just didn't copy over right it's just so strange the Madison one is correct um, looks like kind of a psychological horror type game like Mad Sun I'm not familiar with Matt's son. Well, oh, I see what yeah, you're saying. Like the cap, Matt, yeah, like the cap Matt like Matt is capitalized, lowercase I, and then Sun is capitalized. Like is it Mad Sun? Yeah, maybe. Madison? Maybe You just played the game, bro. Yeah, man. Just just buy the game and play it. That's what they want yeah. me to do. That's a trick. Yeah. Well, I've got nothing else to add except LJ, I I'm gonna hand it over to you and then I'm gonna close off with a statement. Um do you have anything else you want to tell the listeners? Anything that's on your mind, video game wise? Anything you're excited about coming up this following this upcoming week? Um, you know, I, I guess you're gonna keep playing Guardians of the Galaxy, probably getting your Knockout City on. Um, we talked briefly that maybe we were gonna jump into the Nickelodeon game together at some point. Mm-hmm. We need to do that. Maybe we should announce that real quick for the listeners. Every month. Uh, we are picking a PlayStation Plus game at the base tier, one of the free games that they're offering, and we're going to play it as long as we feel like it, uh, for as long as it tickles our fancy. And then the last episode of PS This Is Awesome, in the month that those games come out, um, we're going to talk about the one game we chose to do. This this month, we chose the Nickelodeon Brawl game. I forget what it's called. What Nickelodeon? Uh, All-Star. All-Star Brawl, I think. Brawl, Yeah. So I, I have it downloaded, but I haven't tried it yet. So um, we'll be talking about that. And I think next week will be the week that we have to do it. It's already the 19th. It'll be close, if not next week, the following. But we'll be talking about that. Mm-hmm. So if you want to join in, in that conversation, play a game, go ahead and do so. And uh, we can have more conversations about that. Moving forward on the following episodes. Do you have anything, LJ? Anything you want to talk about? So to say, you know, wish Jake a speedy uh, recovery, and I'm very thankful and honored to you and to Jake for allowing me to jump on here. It's been a blast. Um, again, long time, uh, well, not a long time listener, only but a couple years, but yeah. uh, this podcast, no joke, uh, one of the the things that got me back into gaming for sure and uh definitely if you're not a patreon and you listen to the show regularly it's a freaking dollar a month just just do <laughs> it they're good dudes Thanks, bud. it's a labor of love and um yeah it's worth every dollar um the the sticker is super cool i actually have it on a, a bookcase behind me here nice so yeah. it is a really good good sticker so so sign up sign up do it yeah appreciate that man and, and just to be clear i did not ask him to say that that's right <laughs> off the top he's a he's a very kind person and uh i was gonna kind of say what you said uh jake hope you're feeling better bud uh hate to do this without you but wouldn't want to have to replace you with anybody but lj um i've been doing a lot of gaming with lj lately we've been keeping in touch every week he's been writing in i've uh, been talking on facebook messenger 
Um, we we do have uh, Clint who writes in on the Patreon site every once in a while. I know I've got a I've got a cousin Jeff. I'm going to call him out. Uh, he's got to get his dollar in a month. No, I'm just kidding. I didn't even know he listened to the podcast. To be honest, I was so happy when he sent us that email. It was just it was I was tickled about it. No, but there's no pressure to be a patron. But um, it really does go a long ways. And now that LJ's on the the backside of it, seeing the stuff, the the notes that we do for this show and the research we do, and then. Um, just the orchestrating and, and getting the video call set up and taking the time on a, on a weekend to, to put this thing together just because it's a labor of love. We like to do it. We want to keep it going. We appreciate you, uh, listeners. And uh, again, LJ, thank you so much. Um, Jake and I have really been trying to make sure we don't miss any episodes. Um, and I was kind of... Uh, not sure what I was going to do. Um, I was actually going to reach out to his brother, Josh, who actually joined us on an episode. But uh, again, it's Father's Day and I didn't have his phone number. I, I didn't even know how to reach him, to be honest. And Jake's sick. And I was like, ah, I'm not going to bug him for Josh's number. And um, worst case scenario, uh, I would have just done it by myself and probably just went through the news and gave some quick opinions on some stuff just to continue offering something for the listeners and staying consistent. So, cause I, I do feel dirty about the way we ended our show. Uh, when we dropped off the face of the earth, we had a show and then it just never came back. Um, Jake mm-hmm. and I had just kind of gotten so burnt out. We had so many life stuff going on. Um, we just, we just couldn't keep the wheels turning, man. And like, we didn't offer any kind of thank you for listening. We just, just fucking peered and I felt <laughs> so bad about it. But at the same time, like we were just so burnt out, you know, we were just so burnt out, but the pay, the Patreon is a way to hold us accountable. We will never do that to you. Um, so long as we even have one person giving us a dollar a month, we are not going to disappear on you like we did before. And, and you can hold us to that. Um, promise and uh so i wanted to make sure that i got something out uh for for the listeners this week so thank you so much for being a big part of that lj thanks for being a patron thanks for telling other people to subscribe to the show uh and uh man you're always welcome it's our honor to have you on the show and uh, you're always welcome to jump on talk video games and uh just give a holler if you need a reprieve from your from your regular routine and you want to do a show with jake (laughs) and i we can do a three-person podcast not a problem um We've done it with his brother, Josh, and you're always welcome. And uh, so, yeah, I guess that's that's all I have to say. And uh, if the listeners want to talk shit, um, <laughs> just stop before you get ahead and do it yourselves. Uh, you know, it's not easy to come onto a show. And uh, is this your first podcast you've ever been on? It is. That's fantastic. I'm glad I'm glad to yeah. pop the proverbial podcast cherry uh, for you. Uh, but no, man. Yeah, it's uh, it's different doing a podcast like to you and I. It just looks like a Zoom call. But um, when it's all put together, it's going to be a legit podcast. So uh, with that out of the way, guys, thanks for tuning in to episode 220. Eight of PS. This is awesome. Uh, you've been joined today by myself, Fred Oakman, and Mr. Blip, Blip McDougal, Blip underscore McDougal, LJ Ocker, uh, friend and podcast listener. And uh, we'll be back next week, um, hopefully with Mr. Jake Saw Zero One. And uh, until next time, like Instinction in Nightmare, and I saw black clouds. PS. PS. This is this awesome. Is awesome.